Hi. So this is the third part of the pathology of the female reproductive system lecture. And I'm going to talk about the uterus. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about endometriosis. So endometriosis is presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. And it is commonly consists of both endometrial glands and stroma. But it can be presence of either glands or stroma. It may occur at the following sites. The most common is the ovary and then the uterine ligaments and yeah, rectovaginal septum and all these other sites will can be affected as well. It can cause infertility, dysmenorrhea and pelvic pain and it affects women in their reproductive life uh, which is in the third and fourth decade. Gross morphology, it's presents as nodule with red and blue to yellow brown appearance and if there is an extensive hemorrhage you will see fibrous adhesions between structures involved for, for example between tubes and ovaries and if there is an endometriosis within the ovary it will present as a large cystic mass measuring 3 to 5 cm with brown fluid and the brown fluid is due to previous hemorrhage. This is called a chocolate cyst or endometrioma. Microscopically, you will see presence of either both endometrial glands and stroma, or you may see either glands or stroma outside the uterus, for example, in the ovary or the intestine. And if there is endometrial glands and stroma present within the uterine myometrium, you can refer that as adenomyosis and you can see hemodesiderin laden macrophages in the lesion as well so in this picture you'll you'll see here that there's endometrial glands and stroma and this is within the bowel so this is endometriosis Adenomyosis is defined as presence of endometrial tissue within the uterine wall and grossly it presents as hemorrhagic cysts within the uterine wall. And histologically you will see irregular nests of endometrial stroma with or without glands and it's arranged in the myometrium and it's separated from the stratum basalis of the endometrium by at least 2 to 3 millimeters. So for this picture the cystic hemorrhagic cystic parts are obviously far from the endometrial layer so this is adenomyosis next we go to endometrial hyperplasia endometrial hyperplasia is defined as increased proliferation of endometrial glands relative to the stroma and it is a very important cause of abnormal bleeding and it has a continuum with endometrial carcinoma so it's particularly um, important to diagnose endometrial hyperplasia it's associated with prolonged estrogen stimulation to the endometrium which may be due to anovulation increased endogenous estrogen production or exogenous estrogen there are several conditions associated with endometrial hyperplasia, for example, obesity, menopause, polycystic ovarian disease, for, uh, including the steen leventhal syndrome, and functioning granulosa cells of the ovary. Functioning granulosa cell tumors of the ovary. Uh, and these functioning granulosa cell tumor will, will secrete uh, excessive hormones. There will be excessive cortical function as well that can, can contribute to endometrial hyperplasia such as cortical stromal hyperplasia and there's also prolonged administration of estrogenic substances such as estrogen related therapy like um, oral contraceptive pill for example or hormone replacement therapy Previously, it was classified as simple and complex hyperplasia with or without atypia, but recently it has been reclassified into hyperplasia without atypia and hyperplasia with atypia. So for hyperplasia without atypia, this is an increase in number and size of endometrial glands and with marked crowding with back-to-back -back glands with little intervening stroma in between. So we'll see a lot of glands here, but there is little intervening stroma. 
mitosis is present and the cytology is still normal, means that there is no atypia. Meanwhile, for hyperplasia with atypia, there's also marked crowding of the glands, but they present with cytologic atypia. As you see, um, there's loss of polarity and there's hyperchromatic to vesicular nuclei with prominent nucleoli and the nuclei itself are enlarged and elongated so they exhibit atypia. There is a risk of progression to carcinoma in hyperplasia with atypia and in older women the treatment is hysterectomy but in younger women they will uh, the clinicians will give a trial of progesterone therapy and close follow-up before they decide the next step for this patient. Endometrial carcinoma is the most common invasive cancer of female genital tract and is mainly in postmenopausal women and it's very uncommon in women less than 40 years old. It can be divided into type 1 and type 2. So type 1 includes endometrioid adenocarcinoma and type 2 includes serous adenocarcinoma. So this is the difference between type 1 and type 2 and um, type 1 presents in younger age group compared to type 2. Clinically, type 1 presents with unopposed estrogen and is associated with obesity, hypertension, and diabetes. Meanwhile, for type 2, usual, the uterus is usually atrophic and the patients have a thin physique compared to type 1, uh, usually present with obesity. Morphologically, Type 1 presents microscopically as an endometrioid type, which resembles endo endometrial glands, while type 2 can typically present as serous adenocarcinoma, and there's other endometrial carcinomas as well, such as clear cell and mixed Mullerian tumor. The precursor for type 1 will be hyperplasia, endometrial hyperplasia and type 2 will be endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma or EIC. For the molecular genetic, type 1 is associated with P10 especially and for type 2 they are associated with P53 and aneuploidy. In terms of behavior, type 1 is more indolent and spreads via lymphatics and for type 2, it's definitely more aggressive and it's spread by both intraperitoneal and lymphatic spread. So for type 1, endometrial carcinoma or endometrial carcinoma, grossly it presents as a localized polypoid tumor or diffuse tumor involving the endometrial surface. It may be exophytic or fungating. Like this picture, the uterus is, has been cut into half and the surface is covered by this polypoidal tumor covering the endometrial surface. It spreads by direct endometrial invasion with eventual extension to the periuterine structures. It may have palpable mass in the broad ligaments and it may metastasize to the lungs, liver bones and so on. Histologically, um, it is mostly endometrioid adenocarcinoma for type 1 carcinoma. So it presents as back-to-back -back endometrial type malignant glands. So you see the endometrial lining here and actually this is malignant endometrial glands and it has uh, invaded into the underlying stroma and the stroma is desmoplastic and there will be many mitotic figures. Sometimes you can see adjacent endometrium with a typical hyperplasia and um, they may present with vascular invasion as well. For type 2 endometrial carcinoma, it's usually associated with poorly differentiated tumors and the most common subtype is serous carcinoma. Um, the patient may be asymptomatic for a period of time and eventually present with irregular or postmenopausal bleeding. Diagnosis will be biopsy, curatage, and histological examination, which is similar to how we diagnose type 1 endometrial carcinoma. And the treatment will be chemotherapy and may include irradiation as well. Serous carcinoma grossly arise in a small atrophic uterus and eventually may form bulky tumors or involve in, invade deeply into the myometrium. Histologically, it can presents as papillary growth. So this is papillary growth with branching core-like 
tree-like structure and of stroma here and it's surrounded by the epithelial cells, the malignant epithelial cells. And these cells have marked atypia with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, atypical mitotic figures, heterochromasia, and prominent nucleoli. It may be predominantly glandular but at very high grade. This is unlike endometrioid carcinoma, which endometrioid carcinoma, which may be um, low grade or uh, moderate grade. It is associated with extensive peritoneal disease, suggesting spread by roots other than direct invasion. For example, it can spread by tubal invasion or lymphatic invasion. Malignant mixed Mullerian tumor is less common, but important to know, it is a previously called carcinosarcoma, which means that there is an element of carcinoma or malignant glands as you see here and there's also an element of sarcoma with malignant changes in the stroma so grossly it presents as fleshy bulky or polypoidal tumor and histologically again you see this adenocarcinoma with um, sarcoma or malignant mesenchymal elements you can also see striated muscles cartilage adipose tissue or bone Leiomyoma is very common. It's commonly called uh, fibroids and 75% of women will be affected in their active reproductive life. Grossly, it presents as sharply circumscribed, discrete, round, firm, grey-white tumour varying in size and it may also involve uterine ligaments, lower uterine segment and cervix. Histologically, it is composed of uh, uniform smooth muscle cells that resemble uninvolved myometrium and smooth muscles which is uniform in size and shape and have oval nucleus and long slender bipolar cytoplasmic process with scarce mitotic figure. And you will see this a lot during um, your attachment in uh, the anatomic pathology. For leiomyosarcoma, it is has big incidence of 40 to 60 years of age and it can present in both pre- and postmenopausal age. It has a tendency to recur after removal and more than half eventually metastasize to, dif to distant organs. For leiomyosarcoma, grossly it presents as a bulky fleshy mass that invades the uterine wall or polypoidal mass. And histologically, um, to differentiate leiomyoma and leiomyosarcoma, leiomyosarcoma has nuclear atypia, which is enlarged oval nucleo nuclei. So this is more cellular and the nucleus is more enlarged than le leiomyoma. It has a high mitotic index and you can see an atypical mitosis here. So this is definitely not your typical leiomyoma. You can also see zonal necrosis as well in leiomyosarcoma. And the definition for increased mitotic index is presence of 10 or more mitosis per 10 high power fields. This is because there is an entity called um, leiomyoma with increased mitotic activity and um, that is still considered a leiomyoma and not leiomyosarcoma. So you need to have more than 10 mitosis per 10 higher power fields in that case. Okay, so that's it for um, uterus pathology. And the next lecture will be a lecture on uh, ovary pathology. Thank you.